When I say the word villain, you might think of a comic book or perhaps a movie, but I have something a little more realistic for you. Marvin Heemeyer was known as a very likable person. He was a welder from Granby, Colorado, and in 1992, Marvin purchased two acres of land in order to build his own muffler shop. Failing to handle assets towards his business loans had caused him to have no choice but to sell his land. A concrete company negotiated and agreed to pay $250,000 to him for his property. He later agreed, but changed the settlement and demanded to be paid $375,000 and eventually tried to demand a deal of a million dollars. In 2001, town trustees approved the construction of the concrete manufacturing plant. However, this was something that Marvin made difficult. Unable to come to terms, Marvin was very unhappy with his settlement and began to grow angry. During his settlement, he was able to use the money towards buying a Komatsu bulldozer. In a year and a half, he was able to transform the bulldozer into a weapon, equipping it with a semi-automatic rifle, several video cameras linked to the dashboard, and heavy armored pieces attached to the exterior. He even established life support inside. On June 4th, 2004, Marvin drove his armored bulldozer around Granby, Colorado in order to start his rampage on the town. The rampage lasted just over two hours resulting in the destruction of 13 buildings such as the town hall, newspaper companies, the concrete plant, and the home of a former judge. With his semi-automatic rifle, he began shooting at propane tanks and power transformers in an attempt to cripple the town. SWAT members were able to relocate the townspeople and take over the streets in hopes of stopping any further damage. Anything officers threw at the bulldozer seemed to simply bounce off its sides. But eventually Marvin attempted to destroy a hardware store, unaware that it had a small basement beneath it. And when he rode over it, the bulldozer collapsed into the basement and became stuck. As SWAT officers surrounded the bulldozer, they heard a single gunshot from inside the sealed cab. Marvin had killed himself before police could capture him. Marvin's rampage resulted in over $7 million in damages, and luckily, no one was killed in the event. It was said that it took officers over 12 hours to get through the armor and inside the sealed cab. When I say computer genius, that could mean a number of different things. Joseph Konopka was known as a great student when it came to computer technology. He eventually grew tired of his studies, though, and began using the internet as a viable source to recruit people he called his disciples. Turning himself into the leader of the group, he decided to name himself Dr. Chaos and his disciples as the Realm of Chaos in 2002. With a group of knowledgeable people, including himself, the group went on to cause a total of 28 power outages and 20 interruptions at Wisconsin power plants. The damage worsened as they began to commit arson, disrupting television and radio broadcasts around the state, as well as dangerously tampering with Wisconsin's air traffic control systems. The damage he had caused reached up to $200,000 that year. His crime soon brought the attention to the FBI. Investigation and questioning went towards a community of hackers who held gatherings and published their own magazine revolving around illegal hacking. Police questioned members and asked what their knowledge was of Joseph. Joseph's crimes continued throughout the year and police eventually made a disturbing discovery. Chicago police arrested Joseph at the University of Illinois the same year. Law enforcement was able to trace the whereabouts of potassium cyanide and sodium cyanide in a Chicago Transit Authority storeroom unit inside of the Chicago Blue Line subway. It was later known that he began picking locks from prohibited stations to access unused tunnels where he stored the chemicals and lured young adults to assist him in his attacks. In 2004, he was charged with conspiracy to commit terrorism and was sentenced to 13 years in prison for hiding deadly cyanide in tunnels, knocking out power lines, damaging computers, and burning buildings. He is ordered to pay $435,000 in restitution to various victims who were affected by his crimes. To this day, it is unknown as to what motivated Joseph to turn to a path of crime, and he refuses to explain himself.
He was a man who ruled Haiti like no other. Francois Duvalier was born to a middle-class family in Port-au-Prince, Haiti on April 14, 1907. Education was a major priority of his growing up. He went on to study medicine and became a certified doctor in 1934. Shortly after, he pursued politics and enrolled in becoming a candidate for elections in 1956. He created dishonest campaigns that promised to rebuild the poverty-stricken country. Francois won the presidential elections in 1957, and the public was very optimistic of him. Just two years later, Francois suffered a massive heart attack, which left him unconscious for over nine hours. Once he finally recovered, many associates believed he suffered neurological damage during his heart attack. During his reign and presidency, Francois created a secret police foundation called the Tontons. Anyone who opposed him were terrorized and assassinated on the spot. He eventually turned to voodoo and began to model himself as Baron Samedi, a worshipper and angel of death that resembles a corpse dressed for burial. Many citizens were told he had obtained superpowers and was godlike. No one in the country could overthrow him. The Tontons went on to kill over 30,000 Haitians. Francois was titled Papa Doc and declared himself president for life after rewriting the Constitution in 1964. Once named president for life, Papa Doc continued to spread his evil over the country. Warning people not to cross him, he would decapitate people's heads and leave them around local markets to set fear in families. The country became sick and fell into darkness while he was in control for his 14 years. Francois passed away in 1971 from complications tied to his history of diabetes. His son, Jean-Claude Duvalet, took over the country after his death. Before we go, I would like to give a special shout out to Videoblocks. Videoblocks has provided all of the footage you've seen in this video. Videoblocks is the largest provider of stock photos and videos on the internet, and they've graciously decided to offer Seriously Strange fans a seven day free full access trial if you visit the link in the description below. Videoblocks is a great resource for creators and protects them from the risk associated with copyrights. With Videoblocks, creators are always in fair use compliance. So if you like to create like I do, head over to the link below to get your seven day free trial with full access to their entire library. Thank you for your time. And also don't forget to subscribe to my channel by clicking on screen now or below this video so you don't miss the next episode of Seriously Strange. And I'll see you next time.